<laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Last week, we finally had some visitors. Ever since COVID hit us, well, it's a perfect chance to serve my proud hot pot to my guests. How to prepare a nice hot pot dinner at home yourself? Come on, check it out. A hot pot meal normally includes, but is not limited to, the following factors: meat or seafood, veggies, carb type food like noodles, some bun or fried dough, dipping sauce, and hot pot soup base. I'm gonna explain all the details. First, soak some dry ingredients in water. I have some wood ear mushroom. It's pressed, so it's easy to store and carry. You can get a lot of woodier mushroom with this small piece of dry one. Then I have some dry tea tree mushroom, some Chinese yuba. It's some kind of tofu skin. It's the dried top fatty layer from soy milk. It's kind of tofu skin. Put a small plate above to push them down. Here are a couple hot pot soup base you can buy from Asian store. They are spicy, mushroom, and broth flavor. There are more flavors. I just always have these three type in my house. Today I will use this spicy one since all my guests like it. Then it's dipping sauce. You can get this kind of pre-made one in store too. You can use this directly. However, today I will do some extra work to make it taste better. Then carb type food. AKA noodles or bun, something like that. We like starch noodles. These two are mung bean starch noodles. One is thicker. It cooks very slow, but it can soak more soup flavor and has nice chewy texture. This one is thinner. It cooks faster. I also like sweet potato starch noodle. The texture and the flavor is between the other two. Then some noodles. Can be thin one or thicker one. You can also use some dry or fresh homemade noodles, whatever you have. But today I will use this instant noodles. It tastes very good with hot pot dipping sauce, so I have to introduce to my guests. Here is some no sugar or salt added peanut paste and sesame paste. I will use this to make dipping sauce. This is the sesame paste I use, which is suggested by my friend. As you can see, it's super hard. We need to dilute it. First, add some sesame oil. Sesame oil gives extra sesame flavor and makes easier to dilute. <laughs> it's a lot of labor. That's why I start with this. When the sesame oil is soaked by the paste, start to add water little by little and stir the water into the paste. Soon you will find the sesame paste gets super hard and dry. Don't worry, it's normal. Just continue adding water and mix. The texture will become smooth and thin, just like the texture you can find in dipping sauce in hot pot restaurant. I like to make it slightly thicker since I will add some other sauce later. Process the peanut paste the same way. I made this with fresh toasted peanut for more peanut flavor and. I don't have peanut paste at home. <laughs> I'm too lazy to go to the store. So you may ask if you can use same method to dilute the sesame paste and the peanut paste. Then why I didn't process them together? Well, you can do it to save your time. However, they have slightly different texture. When you process them in same bowl, the paste will not be as smooth and even at the end. I added a little bit peanut butter to make it more smooth, and at the same time introduce some sweet flavor to it. The reason why I didn't use only peanut butter is that there is a lot of sugar inside. It will be too sweet, so it will cover other flavor. The reason why I use two kinds of paste is that sesame paste tastes super good, but it's not super smooth. Peanut paste can introduce both sweet peanut taste and make the sauce more smooth. Here's what we got. Then I will mix the packaged sauce with the peanut and the sesame sauce I made, just like this. By using this method, the sauce will be full of flavor and seasoning. Taste and see if you need anything else. 
Here I will add some MSG, soy sauce and salt. Mix well. Our sauce is done. Next, mix some shrimp ball. I made this before in my Spring Festival Eve dinner video. Here I got some peeled shrimp. Add in cooking wine, ginger juice, and blend it until it's a little bit chunky but sticky. Then add in one egg white and white peppercorn powder and a little bit of MSG. Or none. Mix a little bit. Add in cornstarch and stir along one direction until they stick together. Add more cornstarch if it's too wet. When the shrimp looks like a big chunk and pretty elastic, it's good. Today I will put it in a plate and serve it like this. You will see how to eat it later. I got some beef brisket for today. You can use it for both hot pot and barbecue. Slice it super thin for hot pot. Just like this. It's a lot of work. Or you can use a meat slicer. <laughs> Hold the meat and press with this. Protect your hand with this special glove. Adjust the thickness. Let's go. We literally bought this for hot pot. However, not too long after we purchased it, my husband was told by the doctor that he can't have meat anymore. So I'm actually super excited to use it again. Chew, 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 chew. <laughs> yeah, it's super fast. <laughs> this will be perfect to slice some sandwich meat or cheese too. I got these sesame leaves for my sushi. Now I can use it to garnish my plate. Roll these meat slices into rolls and set them on the plate. You don't have to do this. I made it pretty for my guests. You can buy some thinly sliced meat from Asian store if you are lazy. Then some fish balls and crab meat. We also love some sausage for hot pot. Lunch meat is another popular meat for hot pot. It's not the most fancy meat for hot pot, but it's my childhood memory. Then the mushroom. Whatever mushroom you have, they are all good for hot pot. Just randomly chop them and plate them. Here I have nido, shiitake, and king oyster mushroom. The mushroom I soaked earlier is ready now. Put them together. Here is a wood ear mushroom I got from the small dry book. This need to be chopped a little bit. Tofu is good for hot pot too. Fresh one or frozen one or fried ones, whatever. Also some tofu sheets. This is super condensed tofu. Wash it a little bit, then set it on the plate. Next, I got a whole bowl of veggies. You can use cabbage, spinach, lettuce, or whatever leafy veggie you like. I used some sword lettuce and a bok choy. My family loves broccoli. It's not super popular in China though. <laughs> then some bean sprouts. It's great for hot pot. Lotus root and sweet potato is traditional too. You can also add some potato or seaweed or whatever. Chop the bottom of green onion. Then chop some cilantro and the green part of onion into mince. Press some garlic. Then I got this fermented bean curd. It has a lot of flavor. It's also very traditional sauce for hot pot. Now people can add this in their own dipping sauce based on their preference. Slice some ginger. These are for soup base. Well, we're almost there. <laughs> Put sauce into small bowl for your guests. Then top it with a little bit more sesame oil and chili oil if you like. I'm trying to make it pretty for my guests. 
Put some fermented bean curd in the center. Dipping sauce ready to serve. You don't need a fancy pot to enjoy your hot pot. A super cheap electric skillet can do a great job. Last is a soup base. Let me show you what is inside this package. First, dry seasoning powder. It gives the base flavor of the soup. Then fermented beans. I put this kind of beans in my fish too. Next is some fried chili pepper. <laughs> it looks spicy, but it's not. It just adds very nice flavor. Then add in water or broth. Add in the small plate of ingredients. Last, top of is the yummy chili oil. <laughs> it's ready to go. After a lot of preparation, it's finally dinner time. I also had some thin sliced chicken thigh and lamb in my freezer. They are great for hot pot too. I try to control the quantity of every ingredient, but it's still a lot. You can even add more stuff. I got this menu from a hot pot restaurant. You can see all the options for hot pot. Someone also likes squid, beef tripe, sea cucumber, meatball, or whatever. This is how to eat the shrimp. Use a spoon. Dip the spoon in boiled soup first, so the shrimp won't stick on the spoon. Then use the spoon and shape it into a ball. Drop it into the pot. It gets cooked super fast. So you just pick up the food you want from the pot and dip it into your sauce. Then enjoy your food. Hot pot is about share. All friends and family sit around the table. Enjoy the hot food. Drinking, talking, laughing. Time just passed by so easily. People can enjoy the time and the food together. That's why all Chinese love hot pot so much, regardless it's hot or cold outside. If it's cold, perfect. Hot pot will warm up your body and your soul. <laughs> If it's hot, doesn't matter. We will turn the AC to super low and enjoy the tasty hot pot. That's how much we love it. I hope you love it too. Maybe after this video, you can invite your friends to your place for a hot pot party. Well, this is today's video. You can leave a comment down below if you have any question about hot pot. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like, or share button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.